hey, good morning, everybody. This is a little different, but here we are. We're going to do our very best to gather as the body of Christ today and to worship, even though we're all gathered in separate homes. We hope you have a decent connection this morning, uh, not only to be online, but you feel uh, by doing this that you have the opportunity to connect with your Heavenly Father today and worship and with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, we are living in such a different time, but we're so glad for uh, the power of technology to go uh, around the world. So uh, we're going to begin to just turn our hearts to Christ today and to uh, fix our eyes on him and sing some worship songs. And so we invite you to sing right along with us this morning. Worthy of every, worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of every praise we could ever bring. You're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. We could ever sing Worthy of all the praise We could ever bring You're worthy of every breath We could ever breathe We live for you Yes, Lord Jesus, the name above Every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you. No. 
Jesus, you really are the name above every other name. And we lift up our voices to you today right from our homes. From wherever we are, God, you are uh, calling us near to your heart. And you are calling us and drawing us to come near to you today and to walk closer with you. And God, in this time of, of isolation and separation, we just want to embrace you as our Father. Embrace the love you have for us. And God, all the distractions of what life was even a week or two ago, we have laid aside not even of our own choice, but God, we choose to pick up uh, the word of God and to embrace all that you have for us in this season. You are not caught off guard by this, and you are not uh, dismayed and wringing your hands and not sure what to do. And God, we just uh, want to walk closely with you. Uh, help us, God, in this time. Cause I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken. It's a time when lots of our foundations are shaken, but we know that God is holy, God is all-powerful, God is all-knowing, and he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and uh, he's going to walk with us through this. So we're glad you've joined us for worship today. If you're sitting at home watching, which I guess we are, aren't we? If you would take your phone right now, or take your computer, and right below where you're watching the video... Take a second and just hit the share button below that. You would have the opportunity to uh, share our service this morning with all your friends. And uh, we know that this is a time that lots of people are looking for hope, looking for encouragement, and looking for um, just something to grab onto and hold on to. So we invite you to grab onto God's truth. If you would share that with your friends right now, that'd be wonderful. Um, I want to make mention of one thing, one announcement that um, uh, before we continue to worship, uh, Caleb has posted this already, but I want to say it in case you didn't read it. Tuesday night, there'll be a youth gathering at seven o'clock online. Go to the Crossfire Youth page and follow them if you haven't already. And uh, Caleb will be uh, leading the youth group virtually that night and experimenting with some, uh, some cool ideas, uh, some fun stuff, and a message to point uh, teens to, to the Lord in this time. So Crossfire Youth page, go check them out so our teens can follow along. Kids, uh, if you're watching with mom and dad today, hey, we miss you. We hope you're having a good time at home, though. Hope you're washing hands and staying uh, well. We want to uh, encourage you and mom and dad to um, follow along with the interactive Bible stories that our leaders are posting every Sunday morning and the activity pages for your Bible stories are there as well. So you can continue to grow at home with mom and dad. So please do that. Check those out all on our Facebook page. And um, I think we may be having some struggles with our YouTube stream this morning. Um, if you have friends who are looking for that, just let them know that will be coming afterwards and we'll hopefully work that out at a later time. I'll stop talking now. Let's continue to sing. Sing of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. 
Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God Sing all my life all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath that i am able i will sing of the goodness of god i love your voice you have led me through the fire in the darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life have been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God and your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me with my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after is running after, it's running after me, with my life laid down, I surrender now, I give you everything, and your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God And I will sing of the goodness of God And I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. We're singing how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall my sins he took my sins and my sorrows he made them his very own he bore the burden to calvary he suffered and died alone they're singing high
my Savior's love for me. Everybody singing, how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love. morning, Woodstock Wesleyan. We have gathered together in a uh, new format, uh, but in the same spirit and for the same reason, and that's to worship the Lord. And so I welcome you as our church family this morning. And uh, it is different, as all churches are finding, to look out over our auditorium and see just uh, a handful of people. Uh, keeping within the guidelines that the province and our country has set out at this particular time uh, about how many can gather. Uh, but it's good to be with you this morning, uh, right there in your home. And so to those who are a regular part of our church, it's good to see you, good to be with you. For those of you who have just joined in, perhaps someone has invited you and you're not a regular part of our congregation, we are excited that you are with us today. And for those of you who are perhaps just curious and wondering what goes on in churches on Sunday morning, and this is kind of a safe distance, too, for you to check out church, I'm glad you're here. And can I encourage you to stay connected throughout the entire service? Because I believe that God has something he wants to say to you, as, to well, as well as to those who are a regular part of our church family. The Word of God is such a great source of comfort. And I have to believe that many of you uh, have been regularly turning to the Word to find strength and to find encouragement in these unprecedented days of uh, fear and uncertainty and change. But the Word of God does not change. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Word of God is a solid foundation on which we can build our lives some of you may this week have gone and started looking and said, I did have a Bible at one time. I wonder where it is. Maybe you've gone and you've found it or you've gone to a digital version. I want to encourage you to read the Word regularly. Uh, the YouVersion app on your phone is an incredible resource um, in this digital world. Go there if you don't have a physical copy of the Scriptures. But take time today to read the Word Psalm 46, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation today, and I realize that many of you read different translations, and uh, that's okay. Um, this is the word of the Lord, and I want you to, to, to hear this this morning. It says, God is our refuge and strength. Maybe we just need to pause right there. God is our refuge and strength. Always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos, and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders, and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come, see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. 
the Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. I want to assure you today that the Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. And he's with you right where you are today. I want to pray for us. Heavenly Father, we just simply acknowledge that we do love you today and that we really, really need you. And we simply, Lord, today would say, come Holy Spirit, we need you. Come sweet Spirit, we pray. Father, we are thankful that you are in control and that you are Lord over all. And so we pray for your church gathered. We pray, Lord, today that you would surround and be with each individual who is listening to this broadcast, each individual today who is trying to find their way through all of the uncertainty that is a part of this new season of life that we are in. We are thankful that you are our refuge and our strength, a very present help in time of trouble. We pray today, Lord, again, for those who on the front lines are working diligently to protect us, uh, to give us good guidance, and uh, to reassure us uh, that uh, this uh, pandemic uh, in time will be overcome and uh, that uh, we will be able to return to a state of normalcy in our lives. So we thank you for our government. We thank you for our health professionals. God, we thank you for the fact that you are Lord over all, that you are greater than this pandemic. And Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus today that you would stop this pandemic from spreading, that you would eliminate this virus. And God, in the midst of it, that our hearts would be turned to you and we would acknowledge that the divine hand of God has moved in our midst and we have truly seen a work of God. Lord, we ask for protection Upon all of our healthcare professionals, we pray, Father, today for uh, those who are uh, fighting this battle for the good of all people. We pray for those today, Lord, who um, have been infected and today who are battling uh, this coronavirus. We pray that their health would return. And God, for those families today that have been deeply impacted and they've lost a loved one. We ask, God, that you would bring uh, great grace and comfort um, in this hour of struggle. God, we pray that you will protect the rest of us from the spread of this virus. And God, that each and every day we would simply look to you for the wisdom that we need to live our lives um, in a way that uh, God not only conforms to the anticipated expectations that have been set for us, uh, but that we would approach life with a concern for one another as well and what's best for others. And that we would also take time to realize that most importantly, we must ask what do you want and what do you require of us at this particular time? Our hearts are open. Continue to bless us as we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I just want to encourage you, church, uh, to continue to support one another check in on one another, give them a phone call, send them a text. Uh, Church isn't happening as usual, uh, but some of you have been asking. uh, We are endeavoring to put more and more online ministries and opportunities, and I would encourage you, as been on the uh, slides, uh, the announcements that have been running, uh, just to check uh, our website or our Facebook page um, uh, to, to see about what's upcoming, what's available. And if you have questions or concerns or know somebody in need, contact the church office, leave a message there. Uh, we are uh, becoming equipped to, to leave a devotional message on our church phone. If you uh, would like to call in and check that out, you can do that. Uh, I ask that you continue to remember the financial needs of our church. Um, in a day when we're not able to physically uh, donate our, our offerings and our gifts to the work of the kingdom, Uh, These are challenging days, but God's going to look after us. But we do have the option of online giving. And if you go to our website or our our, our Facebook page, the information is there. 
And uh, as has been on the screen, we'd encourage you to continue to give in that manner. God's going to look after us as a people and as a church, and I thank you for being a part of that. Let's continue to worship. Let's continue to, to uh, just lift up the name of the Lord. It is uh, really a, a great responsibility uh, that I feel this morning uh, to share with you um, at this very critical time and at this very important time. Um, I have asked the Lord um, very specifically to give me a word to share with you today. And it's kind of a strange thought, but I was awakened throughout the evening uh, as the other evening as I was trying to sleep and found myself very restless, but my thoughts were focused on what God would have me share with his church. And in the midst of this very challenging uh, pandemic, the word grace kept coming back to me. That this is a day of God's grace. In the midst of the seriousness of this pandemic, God has a plan and God has a purpose. You know, I've never been, and I'm sure you've never been, in a situation uh, like we find ourselves today. In a situation where the things that we love and even take for granted are now uncertain. You know, for the most of us, we've been living life um, as masters of our own destiny. We've been living life as if we were in control of everything. We made our decisions about what we wanted to do, where we wanted to go, what we wanted to eat. Just lived life in a way that benefited us and brought us pleasure. But then all of a sudden, uh, we've come to realize how little we are in control of everything. Have any of you felt vulnerable? Uh, I have. I've realized that some of the things that I've taken for granted are no longer um, available to me. Um, decisions and limitations have been placed on all of us. And each one of us has now started to really begin to ponder and to think about what's truly important. Our health, our families, each other. All of those things, all of a sudden now, are the, focal, um, are the focus of our attention. Um, and we think about what's going to be required and how am I going to cope with this new reality and how long will things be as they are? In the midst of all of this, I want to assure you that God has been speaking. God is speaking. God has been speaking since creation. God has been speaking to each one of us since the very dawn of creation. And he's been calling us to himself. But I have to acknowledge, as many are acknowledging, that we have been a very distracted uh, people. That is, until now. And that's why I believe today is a day of grace. It's a day when things that we have thought as normal and have taken for granted, have all of a sudden been kind of taken from us. And in this void, and in a sense, and in this vacuum, there's a stillness, there's a quietness. And I believe that in this moment, God is speaking. And God's voice is being heard globally. God's voice is being heard in places and in ways that has never been heard before because we have been distracted, we've been preoccupied, we've been busy. 
but God has been speaking. And the scripture that I focus on this morning that I, I just want to lift out of the word to you is, be still. These are the words of God. Be still and know that I am God. And I will be honored by every nation. And I will be honored throughout the world. God is saying, be still and know that I am God. I said that God is speaking. And God is speaking to every one of you who has tuned in this morning, who is watching this broadcast, who may have just even accidentally come across this, this, this broadcast. And these words are for you today. God is speaking. But what is God saying to us this morning? I believe there are two things that God is saying to us. One is he is saying, come to me. He's saying, come to me, all you who are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God is inviting us to come to him. To discover who he is and his plan and his purpose for our lives Not everyone intentionally rejects God and says, I don't believe there is a God. Some do. There are those who do not believe in the existence of God. But many of you would be considered God-fearing people. And you'd say, I believe in God. But I've just been really too busy or too preoccupied to really hear the voice of God. Today, God is saying to you, come to me. But he's also saying through his word, come back to me. One of the messages of scripture in 2 Corinthians that speaks of the church, it says that we are Christ's ambassadors and the message that God has given us as Christ's ambassadors is to call people, to encourage people to come back to God. Maybe you've once walked with God. Maybe you once had a personal relationship with God. But for some reason, you've drifted away from God. The word of God to you today is come back. And can I clarify this? God is not calling you to come back to a church. Oh, yes, the, the gathering of the church is still important. But one of the things that this coronavirus has done, and by the implementation of this uh, recommendation of limiting the size of our gatherings, we are not being called to a physical gathering of the church. It's now a virtual gathering of the church. But you are not called to be a part of a building, uh, a physical gathering, but a spiritual gathering. And so Christ is calling you to himself. He's calling you to himself. So what is the message that God wants us to hear today? In this hour of grace, you know, we've heard a lot of, we've been hearing a lot of bad news. Um, if you're like me, it seems like there's a saturation point. You, you just keep hearing of more and more cases of the coronavirus and, and how it's impacting and more closures and more limitations and, and, and it can be overwhelming. And there is the bad news. The, the coronavirus is, is very real. It is impacting many, many people. It's impacting us daily. We can't deny that. And I th I'm thankful for all of those who are, who are uh, giving us good direction as to how to... Uh, stop the spread of this and how to prevent uh, being infected and, and what to do uh, if we are. Um, but I want to share some good news with you today. Um, the Apostle Paul said, and I think it's important that we remind ourselves of the good news. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news that I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is this good news that saves you. If you continue to believe the message I told you, unless, of course, you believed something that was never true in the first place. 
I passed on to you what was most important and what also was passed on to me. Christ died for our sins. Just as the scripture said, he was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scriptures said. The good news of the gospel. You know, we know the coronavirus is bad news. The good news that we're all waiting for is that there's a vaccine to combat it, that uh, there, there has been a breakthrough, that if we, we take this vaccine, uh, we will, in a sense, be saved from the impact of this virus. Can I tell you this morning that Jesus Christ came into this world as the antidote for sin? And that sin infected all of us. We were without Christ. We were without hope. You know, the coronavirus is no respecter of persons. Rich, poor, educated, uneducated, no matter, regardless of the nationality or the race. One of the things that we have learned through this uh, pandemic is a message of equality. We're all the same. The scripture says, the Bible says, that I suppose you could use this term, that we've all been uh, affected by sin and infected by the sin virus. And the truth is there's nothing we could do to cure ourselves or to fix ourselves. But that's where the good news is. The good news is that Jesus Christ became the sacrifice for sin. In a sense, he became the sin vaccine. And that was Jesus' death on the cross on our behalf. He died so that we might live. But I want to say to you today that just knowing that Jesus did this is not enough. By faith, we must acknowledge our need that we are all sinners, that we can't save ourselves, and that it's only through having the blood of Jesus applied on our behalf for our sin that we would receive the forgiveness of sin. You see, in this moment, God is calling us and speaking to us and calling us to come to him, to give our lives to him, to acknowledge that there is a God-shaped vacuum in all of our lives that we have been trying to fill with many, many other things to find purpose and meaning in life. But the truth is that one day all of us will die. It's appointed unto man once to die. And then the scripture says, but then comes the judgment. And it won't matter at that time all the accomplishments, all of the things that we have done, all the things that we have accumulated, all of those things will, will not matter any longer. The only thing that will matter is what have we done with Jesus and Jesus in his love is reaching out to us today and calling us to repent or to turn from our sin and to come to him and experience not only the forgiveness of sin, but the peace of his presence living in us. An indwelling spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit that will empower us and give us grace and strength to not only face today, but to face tomorrow and have a hope of one day seeing Jesus face to face and having a, a, a home in eternity forever. Today, I want you to consider in the stillness of this moment that God is speaking and is speaking to you. The hymn from many years ago said, What can wash away my sin? And the hymn poet said, Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? And the response is, Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You know, it's in God's love that he is reaching out to you today and he's reaching out to me. In the book of Jeremiah, um, the prophet Jeremiah penned these words. Long ago, the Lord said to Israel, I have loved you with an everlasting love, my people. With an everlasting love, with unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. You know, God was drawing the nation of Israel and is in the process of reestablishing the nation of Israel. God's people have always uh, he's always had a heart for his people and he is drawing. And, and, and while this was specific to the nation of Israel, it is also true um, of God's love for every believer. 
It describes God's love for every believer. And God doesn't force or compel them. He draws them in love and compassion. And today, God is reaching out to us in love. In Romans 5.8, it said that God showed us his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. God's reaching out to us in love today. And he's calling us to himself. He's saying, come to me. He's saying, come back to me. God's great love was demonstrated in his gift of his son. In that great verse, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. God loves you today. God cares about you today. But he's also speaking to you in this moment of quietness to say, give your heart and life to me. Follow me. And that's more than just an intellectual assent. One of the key things that must accompany the agreement that, yes, God's word is true, is what we refer to in the scripture as repentance. It says in the scripture to repent and turn to God. And in speaking of Israel and in this 31st chapter of, of Jeremiah, the scripture says, I turned away from God, but then I was sorry. I turned away from God, but then I was sorry. Or the New King James says, after my turning, I repented. And repent means to turn from sin and change one's heart and behavior to feel regret and contrition for trying to do life without God. And today, God is inviting you in his grace and in his love and his mercy to acknowledge that, yes, we are sinners. Yes, we have tried to live life on our own, but we need God today. And we ask him to come into our hearts and to forgive us of our sin. We have godly sorrow for our sin, and we are repenting. We are turning back to God and saying, God, forgive me and give me your spirit and give me your grace to help me live for you. And the result, even as you look at this 31st chapter of Jeremiah, in response to their repentance, and that day when there is that turning, he says, I have given rest to the weary and joy to the sorrowing. Today, my prayer is that in this day of grace, for whatever reason God has allowed this coronavirus to spread, but in this day, God is speaking and God is saying, I care about you. And now that he has our attention, let's not neglect the voice of the Spirit. But today, I encourage you, even right now, if you have never put your faith and trust in Jesus, if you've never asked Jesus into your heart as your personal Savior, to hear his voice saying, come to me. Come and acknowledge your sin. Repent of your sin. Turn away from sin and begin to follow me. Today, God is inviting you to do that. Or if you've once walked with him, he's saying, come back. It's time to come back to the father. Like the prodigal son, when he came to his senses, he came back. Today, some of you have been wandering and just been busy with life. The spirit is speaking and saying, come back to me. The scripture is so beautiful in 1 John 1, 9 that says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I'm going to lead us in a prayer. The guys are going to come back and lead us in worship. But I want to invite you right where you are this morning, in your home, wherever you are, are receiving this broadcast, that if you have never prayed that prayer or if you've prayed that prayer before and have wandered away, and today you are responding to this voice of the Spirit to say, come back again, that you would pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I acknowledge your voice and that you have been speaking to me today. I, I now understand your great plan for my life. I understand the good news of the gospel. I acknowledge that my sin has separated me from you. 
and that I've tried to do life on my own. Today I acknowledge my sin, my waywardness. And with deep regret and sorrow I say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Come into my heart and cleanse me. Wash my heart whiter than snow. Place your spirit within me and give me that holy desire, that, that, that passion to serve you with my whole heart from this day forward that I might listen to your voice and begin to learn of you through your word, through the scriptures, and I might begin to communicate with you through prayer and, and begin to fellowship with the body of Christ to be strengthened and encouraged. God, I pray right now that you would answer the prayers of those who are praying and crying out to you. And Lord, who right now are experiencing that miracle of forgiveness, that they are passing from darkness into light, that they are now a new creation in Christ Jesus, that the old life has passed away and behold, all things have become new. They have been born again into the family of God. They are a new creation the sin, the old life is gone and you, they are now being, uh, they have been forgiven and they have been, uh, God redeemed through the blood of Jesus Christ. God, I pray in Jesus' name that you would strengthen each and every person who has prayed that prayer and empower them to live the life that you have called us all to live. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. One last thing. If you've prayed that prayer, I would encourage you to reach out to someone and let them know that you've made this most important life decision. We as a church would like to fo uh, follow up with you and, and support you in your decision. So could you do a couple of things? If you've prayed that prayer, could you just email one of those uh, emails, addresses that are on the website? Um, Acknowledge that you prayed to receive Jesus today, that you have come to Jesus or have come back to him. Let us know or even call the church office. Uh, email one of us as pastors. We want to support you and encourage you. We want to invite you to participate in some uh, online experiences to help you grow as a Christ follower. But today we celebrate that that most important decision. And I thank you in the name of Jesus for listening to the voice of God who has been speaking. God bless you. I invite you to sing with us. Are you hurting? Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with 
Truly privileged to be able to join you in your home this morning uh, by video, and uh, we're grateful that you've joined us. Uh, we are figuring out how to continue to be the church, and this is just the beginning, worshiping together, gathering, but now we go and we live out our faith. If we can be an encouragement to you this week, please uh, get in touch with us. Our contact information is at woodstockwesleyan.org, or follow us on Facebook or YouTube. We'd love to be an encouragement in your walk right. as we uh, continue to navigate these, these tricky days. Uh, let's close in a word of prayer. Father, uh, we thank you that you have called us into relationship with you through your son and what he did for us on the cross. We ask, God, that you'd give us hearts that are turned toward you, hearts that are repentant and that turn from sin and embrace all that you have for us. Thank you for giving us eternal life and hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. We ask that you keep us safe. We ask uh, in a whole new way, God, that we probably never asked before, that you keep us safe. Bless our, our town, our county, our province, our country, our leaders, O oh Lord, and all who are uh, endeavoring to help in uh, this time of great need. We look to you as uh, the source of all hope and everything that we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day, wonderful week. We hope to have lots of communication with you. Take care. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. 
Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ.